This project is made possible with funds from the statewide community regrants program, a regrant program of the New York State Council on the Arts with the support of the Office of the Governor and the New York State Legislature and administered by the Bronx Council on the Arts.
One December hearts will see a world where we are free. Someday at Christmas there'll be no wars when we have learned what Christmas is for. When we have found what life's really worth, there'll be peace on earth. Someday all our dreams will come to be. Someday in a world where we are free. Maybe not in time for you and me, or someday at Christmas time. Someday at Christmas, there will be no tears. We will all reap for someday for no one that fears. One shining moment, one fair old ray from our world today. Someday all our dreams will come to be.
I'm sure you've all heard parodies of the 12 days of Christmas. Seems like everyone's written one. And now we have a submission from our friends in Ireland. A gentleman named Frank Kelly offered up a series of 12 letters that his character, Gobnet O'Lunacy, wrote to his true love, Nola, after receiving each day's gifts. We'd like to share those letters with you. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to Dear Nola, thank you very much for your lovely present of a partridge in a pear tree. We're getting the hang of feeding the partridge now. Although it was difficult at first to win its confidence, it bit the mother rather badly on the hand. But they're good friends now, and we're keeping the pear tree indoors in a bucket. Thank you again. Yours affectionately, Gobnetto Lunacy. Dear Nola, I cannot tell you how surprised we were to hear from you so soon again and to receive your lovely present of two turtle doves. You really are too kind. At first, the partridge was very jealous and suspicious of the doves and they had a terrible row the night the doves arrived. 
We had to send for the vet, but the birds are okay again, and the stitches are due to come out in a week or two. The vet's bill was eight pounds, but the mother is over her annoyance now, and the doves and the partridge are watching the telly from the pear tree as I write. Yours ever, Gobnet. Dear Nola, we must be foremost in your thoughts. I had only posted my letter when the three French hens arrived. There was another sort out between the hens and the doves who sided with the partridge and the vet had to be sent for again. The mother was raging because the bill was 16 pounds this time, but she has almost cooled down. However, the fact that the bird's droppings keep falling down on her hair while she's watching the telly doesn't help matters. Thanking you for your kindness, I remain your Gobnet. You mustn't have received my last letter when you were sending us the four calling birds. There was pandemonium in the pear tree again last night, and the vet's bill was 32 pounds. The mother is on sedation as I write. I know you meant no harm, and remain your close friend, Gobnet. Nola, your generosity knows no bounds. Five gold rings. When the parcel arrived, I was scared stiff that might be more birds, because the smell in the living room is atrocious. However, I don't want to seem ungrateful for the beautiful rings. Your affectionate friend, Gobnet. Nola, what are you trying to do to us? It isn't that we don't appreciate your generosity, but the six geese have not alone nearly murdered the calling birds, but they laid their eggs on top of the vet's head from the pear tree, and his bill was 68 pounds in cash. My mother's munching 60 grains of valium a day and talking to herself in a most alarming way. You must keep your feelings for me in check. Gobnet. Nola. We are not amused by your little joke. Seven swans a-swimming is a most romantic idea, but not in the bath of a private house. We cannot use the bathroom now because they've gone completely savage and rush the door every time we try to enter. If things go on this way, the mother and I will smell as bad as the living room carpet. Please lay off. It is not fair. Gobnet. Nola. Who the hell do you think gave you the right to send eight hefty maids of milk in here to, to eat us out of house and home? Their cattle are all over the front lawn and have trampled the hell out of the mother's rose beds. The swans invaded the living room in a sneak attack and the ensuing battle between them and the calling birds, turtle doves, French hens and partridge make the battle of the Somme seem like wanderly wagon. The mother is on a bottle of whiskey a day as well as the 60 grains of Valium. I'm very annoyed with you, Gobnet. Listen, you louser. There's enough pandemonium in this place night and day without nine drummers drumming while the eight flaming maids of milking are beating me poor old alcoholic mother out of her own kitchen and gobbling everything in sight. I'm warning you, you're making an enemy of me, Gobnet. Listen, manure face, I hope you'll be haunted by the strains of ten pipers piping which you sent to torment us last night. They were aided in their evil work by those maniac drummers, and it wasn't a pleasant sight to look out the window and see eight hefty maids of milking pogoing around with the ensuing punk rock uproar. My mother has just finished her third bottle of whiskey on top of 124 grains of Valium. You'll get yours. Godnet of lunacy. You have scandalized my mother, you dirty Jezebel. It was bad enough to have eight maids of milk and dancing to punk music on the front lawn, but they've now been joined by your friends, the eleven lords of Lepin, and the antics of the whole lot of them would leave the most decadent days of the Roman Empire looking like outlook. I'll get you yet, you old bag. Listen, slurryhead, 
You have ruined our lives. The twelve maidens dancing turned up last night and beat the living daylights out of the eight maids of milkin, cause they found them carrying on with the eleven lords a leaping. Meanwhile, the swans got out of the living room where they'd been hiding since the big battle and savaged hell out of the lords and all the maids. There were eight ambulances here last night and the local civil defense as well. The mother is in a home for the bewildered and I'm sitting here up to me neck in birds droppings, empty whiskey and valium bottles, birds blood and feathers while the flaming cows eat the leaves off the pear tree. I'm a broken man. God let no lunacy. And a portrait in a